and I'm Laura Beth, and we are Steel Magnolias, two sisters who love family, traditions, and all things Southern. We've got plenty of room at our table, so pull up a chair. Hey, Lainey. Hi, Laura Beth. Well, this is a special day because we have expanded our table seats. Oh my goodness. There is not plenty of room at the table right now. (laughs) Like we say there is. In theory there is, but yes, um, just as our intro said, there's plenty of room at the table and we actually invited two special guests with us today. And what we did was, I don't know if the two fine ladies that I'm looking at noticed this, but we bookended our ages to try and have a well-rounded discussion okay so we have multi-generations present today and we wanted to talk through different southern topics and so um and hear different perspectives and yeah Lainey and I have lots of opinions on southern southern culture (laughs) as we share every single week um but we just thought it would be fun to expand the conversation and so we've got two Tennessee natives with us today. Lane, you want to introduce? Yes. So I have my beautiful friend, Diane Edmondson, with us today. Diane is, um, I met her because she was a nurse and esthetician and amazing esthetician who is now retired. And I'm a little bit sad about that. Um, because she was just the best in town. and She is the best. I know. Mm-hmm. But thankfully, she passed down much of her skill to her youngest daughter. Yes. She has two beautiful daughters who um, I knew, I know both of the daughters as well. And now she has three grandchildren. So she's a yah yah. She's a yah yah. Yeah. So well, she, for- to me, is the epitome of Southern Belle. Mm-hmm. Um, just grace and all the things she does. She does everything well, too. I'm not sure how she can do so many things well. But oh my anyhow, that's why I wanted to include her so, yes, today. So we have Diane with us. And then we have Carmen Justice. That's how I at least met her. But now she's Carmen Hadley. And if you do know um, that name, it's because she has a solo artist career. She's a pop artist as Carmen Justice. But she also is a Tennessee native, grew up just about 20 miles north of the Nashville city limits, and now lives in this very nice high-rise in downtown (laughs) Nashville. So um, I met her through my husband and just um, love, love, love the way that she ties her southern roots into her world and her music and her um, just her lifestyle. So, welcome to the table, Carmen and Diane. Yeah. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So, so happy to be here. So, we have um, lots of topics that we're going to try and stay pretty thematic in. Um, but we first wanted to start with the most important, which is Southern hospitality. <laughs> um, now, I know you two well enough to know you guys have hosted a fair amount of events in your life. So um, do you have any just kind of overall thoughts on how you approach hosting before we get into some of the details? Well, for me, it's definitely about the food and the number of guests that are planning to attend. And um, we, we stay pretty close to simple foods. And foods that everybody likes. So that's smart. That's definitely the number one thing is what's the theme, be it 4th of July or a birthday. I mean, we are a big family. My extended family is a big family, so we gather a lot. Mm-hmm. Are you mm-hmm. typically the one having people at I your am, home? I am always <laughs> the one. She has a pool, too, which makes it entertaining. I do. Ooh, like I do. So fun. in the summer, everybody can jump in the pool and come in the house. And we live in a small ranch home. It's not big by any means. So we're all on top of each other. My kitchen is tiny. And everyone always wants to be in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because that has come up on this podcast before is in terms of the size of your home. And I think everyone's in some way waiting till they have a larger space, till they say, I'll host or Mm -mm. um, come to my house. And you kind of can't do that. No. Um, 
Carmen is a very good example as well of someone that doesn't shy away from hosting. I've seen you host. In, yeah. in a high rise in downtown Nashville. We live on the 18th floor, and so it makes it. You would think that would make it difficult with the size of our kitchen or the size of or parking. You know, obviously downtown, but we we try to still have tons of people over. And I think the biggest thing that a southern host tries to do is to make it seem easy. You know what I mean? Like when yes. people come to your house, Didn't you want to break a sweat. Yeah, ever, like, all day. Oh, I just threw this together. You know. <laughs> And I feel like one thing I, I guess I, I was thinking about is when it comes to hospitality is the timing of everything is trying to prep. Like if I'm hosting my family over, I try to prep as much as I can the night before. And then that morning, I almost in my head have to be like, okay, at like eight o'clock, I'm going to wake up and like get this together. But so by the time my family comes over, it looks like I just threw it together and it's easy and things are timed out right. But, um, yeah, I love hosting as much as I can. I can't wait to have a, a house one day. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they don't have more space. But we, we still try to host as much as we can with our friends and our family. And, um, yeah, I think timing is the biggest thing I've learned in my hosting um, experience mm-hmm. is just to, like, figure out a way to make it feel easy to where mm-hmm. people don't feel um, – they feel at ease when they come to your house because yeah. – I, you know, you hate going to someone's house and it just feels like the host or they're like stressed out, like, oh, I'm yes. burning the rolls. And, you know, and mm-hmm. I think one thing I love is making it easy for everyone is like, oh, don't worry about it. Just mm-hmm. come over at noon and I got everything taken care of. Yeah. You know, just so show good. up. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah, because they feel the energy. Oh, for sure. Of what you're yeah. feeling. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So before you even get people over, they have to have heard about your event. So we wanted to talk a little bit about how you extend that invite. Um, Lainey is a lover of all things stationary. So we have talked on the show a lot about everything from, you know, paper invites to thank you notes, et cetera. I'm trying to um, expand into getting with the times, if you will, on using digital in good ways. Yeah. But it is still a struggle for me, quite honestly. And um, so I did want to ask the question of, like, when are digital evites okay? Um, thank you notes. What does that look like in today's age? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about yeah. those kinds of things. I'm going to start with you, Diane. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on digital versus paper invites? We'll start with right. invites. Right. Um, I have received digital invites for birthday parties for little people. And um, they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> I will say they're cute. Um, I am a fan of the written, handwritten. It, it's great, mm-hmm. or a printed invitation. Mm-hmm. But I'm learning to be more accepting of a digital invite. Frankly, I'm just happy to get the invite. That's so, right. That's yeah. True. And I know time is precious to a lot of young mothers, and I appreciate that. I, and I love the effort that is put into it. It can be colorful and fun. And there's certainly a lot more graphics to choose from. Um, but as far as um, myself, I usually will hand write an invite or have it printed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. How far in advance would you try and send out well, an invite? It depends on the occasion, truly. I mean, if it's a wedding, of course, you're going to send it out months before. Um, but say, for example, 4th of July, we always entertain a large group of people, and they all expect to be invited, but I still send out an invite. And I'll usually do that the 1st of June, just wow. because vacations mm-hmm. are planned, and, you know, I want to be sure we we get our invitation to them first. Yeah, that's yeah. so interesting. So, so a, an event like July 4th, which obviously mm-hmm. everybody knows it's coming, mm-hmm. and it's annual Mm -hmm. sometimes is celebrated maybe on the fifth or the third or somewhere around the fourth so you're saying in order to get that date held you still send out yes would you send out a paper invite um i've been known to send out a group text okay that's how i mean truly i have i've been known to do that yeah yeah and that that would be a new move for new technology for sure because it's usually the same crowd 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all the same people. And then they want to know exactly what they can bring. And then they can see one another's list. That's good. List. Yeah. So I kind of kill two birds with one stone, if you get Let's what I'm saying. Let's just see what you're doing there. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a group invite for group participation. Right. Yes. <laughs> Everybody come, not empty-handed. Exactly. Yes. Cool. What about you, mm -hmm. Carmen? Now, you're, I... you're at a disadvantage because you have, not only are you of the millennial age, but... Yes. Your husband is a graphic designer, videographer, and has his hands in so much yeah. that you probably... I got really lucky in that department. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say it just depends on the occasion, though, honestly, because I... The digital world makes it so much easier. Yeah. Like, I feel like you can just click a button, RSVP, it's easy, you don't have to worry about people mailing it in. So... In that regard, you know, that's way easier, that's but true. I feel like the, the, um, Evites, I would only want to set out for like Christmas parties or birthday parties. But when it comes to like, like my sister, she's pregnant Aww. and she's having a baby and I'm obviously in charge of like planning the shower and, um, and that I want paper invitations, you yeah. know, like something like a, like a baby shower or a wedding invitation, those, like, I love good quality paper, too. You know, yeah. when you get, like, a really nice envelope. Like, I know that sounds probably silly to some people. Not but Not to this table. Not to me. Not to this table. Just good quality paper and just a really pretty invitation. I think, it. I don't know, it gets people excited. It, it gets does. me excited. Um, I don't know. Well, and in thinking through what you just said, too, most of the time in shower situations, there's an expectation of, you to bring a gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I think it's like a, something that's paper coming to see the importance of this occasion. Not that a Christmas party isn't important, but in that you're not asking them to bring gifts. Right. Yeah. So it seems For easier sure. to do an evite or something. That seems even more appropriate yeah. to me than if you're asking somebody, come celebrate this union or this new life for sure and bring a gift mm -hmm. then you yeah got it a totally bit depends more on normal. the it depends on the occasion for yeah. sure to me i have seen a new move in wedding invitations where they're kind of doing both so you're getting a paper invite but on the invitation you're being instructed not to return in a paper envelope your rsvp but to visit their website I've seen that. So we I actually did that. that. You did that. Okay. Yeah, we did that. We had a wedding website. And mm -hmm. that made it easy. It, it made the importance of having the actual physical invitation. You can, like, hang it on your fridge or whatever. Mm -hmm. right. But, like, there was a website where you could, people coming from out of town could see where to stay or things we recommend in Nashville. And and it also had, like, links to our registries and stuff. So, yeah, yeah we did that for yeah. our wedding. Do you, one of the things I was just curious to know, do you have a go-to wedding gift or baby gift mm -hmm. or do you always just pick off a registry? How do you, how do you all mm -hmm. do that? I'm big on registries. I, it's so helpful because everyone's different. That's I right. mean, I've gone to some weddings where they ask for the weirdest stuff, you know, and you're like, thank God I looked at their registry because right. I would have gotten them something completely different. So I, I'm a stick to the registry kind of girl. Yeah. Like I go on there figure out, you know, what they want. And I try to go early because I, I don't know about you guys. That's if, a good point. If you've ever gone, you're like, oh man, I haven't gotten their gift. And it's like three day, mm -hmm. days till and you're looking on Amazon Prime, like, Nothing. and there's only like two things and one's $300 and one's like 12. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's been me before. And yes, I'm like, oh I, no, same thing. gift card. Yes. <laughs> That's a good save. And you really yeah. were going to put thought into right. it, but you just had to go exactly. gift card. Exactly. You had to go gift card. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely try to stick to the registry. Okay. But if, like you said, the choices are bad, then mm -hmm. I will take control. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'll go get them a crystal pitcher or having three grandchildren, yeah. I can pretty much tell you what she's going to need that may not even be on her registry. For sure. So sometimes I'll do that. And usually they, they appreciate it. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But who can't use a crystal pitcher? Or, I was going to say, that's a yeah. nice gift. That's a nice I mean, gift. the registry in Franklin has gorgeous things you can choose from. Yes, they do. And anything. And they wrap from, it so yeah, lovely, they do. too. And those ladies are so sweet. Yes. 
Oh, I need to check that. For, what's it called? Flood. The registry. The registry. Okay. It's on Main Street, downtown mm-hmm. Franklin. Okay, I'll have to try that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's wonderful. Beautiful, full of beautiful things. Little shout out. I usually try for baby showers to buy something for the mom, just because mm-hmm. I I like to let parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, I like to let them go buy like real cute things. Um, I will buy something very practical mm-hmm. for the mom, just because I've now walked through that and I'm like. There is some not fun stuff that you need. So let me take care of that. <laughs> I don't want you putting money towards anything that isn't cute. So um, that's kind of my go-to. That's a good idea. Thing that now. is it's true. Something, yeah. something for the mom. Mm-hmm. And usually it's something from the registry, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But something that's not so hip and attractive, cute to open at a shower. So they don't have to use their gift card on that. <laughs> right, yeah. That's good. Yeah. So, Carmen, I saw on your Instagram, I think it was maybe two weeks ago, Did you host a baby shower? Because we're talking about showers, so I just thought... I I know you host a lot, but was it a baby shower? No, I didn't host a baby shower. You probably saw... I'm trying to think. You had a, like, really great charcuterie (laughs) board. Yes. Okay, so charcuterie is my go-to thing these days because it's such a crowd pleaser. Like... It is. I, um... People know I like cooking, like, my close friends and family. They're like, Carmen, definitely bring something. And so (laughs) that's been my go-to thing because I feel like... I, like I said, I live on the 18th floor, and so that's one of the things I feel like I can transport somewhat easy because I can just saran wrap it like okay, crazy, okay. and that way it's just easier than trying to carry a, ca- a hot casserole or, you know, dips and stuff that might spill in the car or in the elevator or something, so charcuterie boards are my thing right now wow. um there's a girl I follow on Instagram Her, she goes by Nashville cheese gal uh-huh uh she's it's like my inspiration for everything so I'll just buy all the cheeses that I see I will literally take a picture of one of the boards that she's done and just go to Trader Joe's and try to buy everything and, I love that. and replicate mm. it but um yeah entertaining in a high rise can be interesting just transporting and yeah have you done it? Have, now I know you guys have like some community space that you've taken advantage of. Have you have you yes. hosted within your apartment before? Or do you always have to use community space? I have. If we have more than I would say even like six people, we try to go up to our rooftop, which we take full advantage of. There's a yeah. there's grills, there's um a full kitchen with I mean an oven, a double oven and like wow. this full thing. So I really take advantage of that. We hosted uh, my husband's Christmas party up there one year and it was so fun like I was in charge of all the food and everything and it was just really nice to be able to have this like downtown thing but to be able to host because it's yeah, cool. it's hard to do you have to be in you know you have to plan it out like I said just be like okay I'm gonna make this at this time and this at another time so that it can work out but yeah. it's fun yeah and let's yeah. talk about getting all those groceries up to the 18th floor. What does that look like? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting. Um, I have the reusable bags that carry more than plastic. So I use those a lot because they literally just hold more. Um, and I try to go often. Mm-hmm. My mom makes fun of me a lot because she's like, are you at Trader Joe's again? And I'm like, yep, I was here yesterday. <laughs> but I think like I try to go often so that I'm not carrying like 10 back because that's just impossible mm-hmm. yeah wow. so going often I have run into a carpet at Trader Joe's before <laughs> <laughs> it's where it's my second home she's like come see this brie cheese you need to know yeah. this this yes. is a good deal over here yes like, okay. oh they're like Jojo's little I could tell you probably 20 things to buy there but we won't go there you should do a blog have you not thought about doing a blog before I should about or, or what you, to buy or maybe just even some Instagram stories of just your a shopping experience with Carmen at Trader Joe's. Honestly, I've never. That would be super cool. <laughs> I you did. Would you love walked, it. You walked me straight to some cheese. Yeah, and you're like this is a good deal. The charcuterie, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I should do that, where I walk people through. Yeah. I can get in and out of there We've faster. talked about doing that before, like showing oh, really? people kind of some of the things, the go-tos in the grocery. Not necessarily at oh, Trader Joe's, really, yeah. but just at the grocery store in general. Like, here's yeah. our party pleasers. Mm-hmm. You know, we go straight to the Hawaiian rolls, and we start making our hand delights. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I'll we might do that. We need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's move a little bit towards some, um, maybe even some specific Southern foods. We want to know a little bit about some of the things that you guys like to cook. Do you have any go-to cookbooks 
websites, blogs you follow. It's, you mentioned the Nashville Cheese Plate. Mm -hmm. Nashville uh, Cheese Gal? Or Gal. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, what, are, what are some of your go-to sources? Start with I you. love the Barefoot Contessa. She produces some wonderful cookbooks, and her recipes are easy to follow. Now, some of them I don't go to because our family is very basic. Mm -hmm. I just try to take the favorites and maybe put a little twist to it, but I've tried to make gourmet food for them, and they turn their noses up, so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I just stick with the basics, but I do get bored with the same old recipes, and I also come from a huge family of wonderful cooks. Wow. So okay. many of my recipes are family mm -hmm. recipes that... How we just repeat. You, how do you keep them stored? Are they on index cards in a they are. box? They're on huge index cards. I found an old library box at a yard sale and bought it, and it has the large index cards. And when I bought it, the lady that had it used it for recipes. Oh, wow. That's so cool. her recipes were still in it. Oh, very cool. Oh. And it's alphabetized, and I just joyfully pulled all of mine mm -hmm. out of all the little crannies and nooks that I have them stored in and put them in one place. So yeah. my big box is right there in the kitchen. That's awesome. I love that. How about you, Carmen? You got any blogs or sites you follow? or? So I'm a big Pinterest girl. Okay. Um, that is my go-to mm -hmm. thing. And I live by Pinterest. I mean, I have it sorted out where I have a board for recipes I want to try. I have a board for recipes that I have tried and that I liked. And then if I try them and I didn't like it, I just delete it. Yeah, so, which is great. So too. that anyone who follows me on Pinterest can know, like, you know, okay, she doesn't like these. Or, or, or she wouldn't put anything on here that, that she, she hasn't. Yeah. You know, she doesn't like. So I use Pinterest a lot. Um, and then I just recently got this cookbook for my sister at Christmas. And it's by Kristen Cavallari, who I'm huge. She's a, a pop, you know, famous person. And I have her cookbook. And I have been intrigued by it because it's stuff I wouldn't normally make. It's very health conscious. And mm -hmm. I've been trying to be more health conscious. And so a lot of her recipes are very um they're like dairy free gluten free all of that mm -hmm. okay. but i've noticed with the few that i've tried a lot of it's just a matter of pan searing her their meats like and that's one mm -hmm. thing that i've learned it's a trick that with any like chicken pork beef if you just like pan sear it in some butter and stick, like in a cast iron mm -hmm. stick it in the oven for mm -hmm. 10 minutes Almost all meats taste good that way. And they that's do. been one thing that I've just never done. I've either like baked it or yeah. done it in a skillet or whatever. But pan searing okay. in that cast iron has been my my go to. Okay. But she's probably laughing. I'm at only me. laughing because <laughs> that is a fancy way of saying we're going to fry that meat. <laughs> Right, we've I done it for it. centuries, but I love that you do that. Yeah, well, thanks. I'm learning very... I think it's great. <laughs> I would have probably yeah. said fancy, too. Yeah. Just because I hear... I don't know. I, I would have not. Have. You would have said so, pride. Would you have said just, pride? Or just... Quickly. Hmm, I'm trying... Yeah. Maybe... I don't know. I know what the term pan yeah. seared right. is. I just don't say that very often, so I'm thinking... Pan seared. Yeah. And maybe yeah. it's just... What I've seen on and that's Pinterest. quick too, whereas frying right. sometimes takes longer. It seals longer. in the juices. Yeah. That's yeah, why we do it. Yeah. Um, another recipe I I was my, Matt was really excited for me to mention this today. Um, <laughs> it, it's very famous in our in our family. I make these things called chicken poofs, and okay. they. Tell. I'm telling you, it is a crowd pleaser. I've made them for mm. my family, friends, and you can make them like. 20 different ways probably but you take crescent roll dough and you put chicken I like rotisserie chicken because it's easy and it's already cooked you shred it up put it in there and I will put um like my favorite's pesto so I'll do some pesto in there you can even put a little like cream cheese if you want or whatever roll it up and then you do a bowl of butter so you like toss it around in the butter and then breadcrumbs and there are these balls, so it's like the chicken and whatever you want on the inside. And then, you wow. know, the breadcrumbs, bake it at 350 for 25 minutes. And I'm telling you, 
never goes wrong. Like I've oh done, goodness. I've done barbecue where you can do like barbecue chicken, you know, and some ranch on the inside. In the crescent roll. Oh, this is going to be fun. It's not the She's most, talking my language. <laughs> it's not the most health conscious. Like I was saying, I'm trying to be more health conscious. But hey, it's so good. And you can make a bunch of them. And they're great as leftovers. But chicken poofs. I can't uh, tell you how many times mm, Matt's see. been like, will you make chicken poofs tonight? <laughs> Do people just grab with, with their fingers? Do you usually put um, a toothpick in them? You usually cut into them. Because they're probably oh, they're the size large. of your fist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they... You could probably make them smaller, but I make them about, yeah, like the size of my fist. Okay. I was imagining more of like a like small, small. meatball kind of, or a sausage ball kind of size. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. If you did something small and had a toothpick in it, that would be really easy. You could probably make to it do. smaller and do like little appetizers. Out oh, of so maybe yeah. you have to half your crescent rolls. Right. Before, to do that. Yeah. Because I use smaller. like two triangles. Okay. Okay. You know? Okay. So I bet if you used one triangle... It could be more of like an appetizer size. Chicken okay. poo. Chicken poo. Like so do you fold it and then seal it with a fork or how do you? I just use my fingers to kind of seal it. Okay. And literally I will put it in my hand like this even to make it more of like a cup ball. It. Yeah. yeah, cup it. I like love it. I'm, I'm making those. Oh yeah. yeah. We're all going to be chicken yeah. poo fans. I'm telling you, every your husbands will thank me. <laughs> do you have an actual link to the recipe? That You know, my roommate back in college taught me that. I, okay. It's not even those are the best kinds written of down. I, like that's the best way I can tell you how to make them. And, and you I can, love the name. Chicken Me poops. too. <laughs> Sounds so fancy. Yeah, right? <laughs> you, pan, you pan sear it. You pan sear it. <laughs> you fry it up. And No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, well, let's say you are going to a potluck. You've been asked to come participate and everybody's bringing something. Or is chicken poops your go-to? I was going to ask you all, what do you, what's your kind of go-to? See, I go for the charcuterie. Dish. You I, do that? Yes, okay. that's probably... My go-to. Just currently, that's what I've been doing a lot of, and people have loved it. Okay. There's a lot of good protein in those charcuterie mm-hmm. boards, too, and mm-hmm. I appreciate that, because mm-hmm. sometimes there's, you know, you want some protein. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. At these things where people are bringing food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Miss Diane? What you? What do you bring into the potluck? Well, <laughs> let's see. It's going to be good. Teach, it is. teach me your ways. <laughs> <laughs> there will be butter. Um, there will be butter. And I'm not Paula Dean, but there will be butter. Um, okay, there is one recipe that I ate when I worked at Vanderbilt. There was a girl that always brought this dish to every potluck we had, and it was always a hit, and it's called cornbread salad. Have you heard of it? Ooh, no. Oh, my gosh. It's so easy, and it's delicious. And it's a layered salad mm-hmm. with cornbread being the base, mm-hmm. and then you layer um you can use anything corn pinto beans chopped peppers tomatoes tomatoes, onions and then uh and the the binder is um ranch dressing Mm -hmm. so you just kind of do your own layer thing and crumbled bacon is always in there yeah so you can make a large bowl of it in no time and it's really filling and good with almost anything And then my second would be um, a cobbler. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. The cup, a cup, a cup, a cobbler. Do you know about that? No. A cup of sugar, a cup of flour, a cup of milk, a stick of butter. But I always (laughs) add my own thing, like, you know, cinnamon and nutmeg if I'm doing peach and, you know. Yeah. So you can make a giant cobbler in no time, too, and it's easy. I'm all about to get it done quick and something that... The plate will be empty when I get yes, home. Yes. I don't want to bring it home. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we had a whole episode once on pies, southern pies. And I made a fudge pie today for our guests, um, which we're going to dive into here shortly. Can't but um, I, I disclosed on that pie episode, I usually buy a already made crust. What are your mm-hmm. thoughts on I'm with crust, you. Crust. I you mentioned quick. Yes. I do not try to tackle a crust because it's never su- been successful for me. I don't know. I know you have to get the butter really cold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are um, secrets to making a perfect crust, but I just, I don't know if I just don't have the patience or something is lacking. But I, and, and then another thing. 
fluting the yes. edges. Yes. Mm. Is that what that's called? I, yeah, I fluted mean, edges. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not good at that part either. So I just kind of make it ugly. It's yeah. always ugly. So I'm about buying pre-made yeah, high crust pre-made. too. In, but, yeah, unless deep it's dish. graham cracker mm-hmm. crust, those can be kind of easier. True, because they can, they you can be allowed for it to be a little crumbly, mm-hmm. but it turns out mm-hmm. that way. But yeah, yeah, if it's like the regular, like for an apple pie or yeah, a pastry crust, pastry crust, crust, crust yeah. yeah, I'll I'll buy it. I do like those rollout ones. For me, I like those better than just the one that's mm-hmm. already in the thing. Okay, yes, I I've seen more graham cracker crusts that are already in the tin pan. Yeah, you must be good at fluting. You must be because <laughs> I've even tried that. With maybe it, zero. Success. Maybe it feels a little closer to homemade. That's maybe true. that's what it is for right. me. I don't know. I know because every Thanksgiving I make my grandmother's um, pumpkin pie from scratch, and mm. and it has a thousand little ingredients. You know, seven eighths cup of sugar. Oh, blah blah blah. Wow. She would bake her pumpkins and all that. I don't do all that, but I always feel just a little tinge of guilt that Pillsbury is the basis for, <laughs> for all of that her wonderful good measurement. Yeah, her old recipe, but it's it's good. So. We want to talk a little bit about um, any cocktails that you guys might want to share. If you've got anything that you have tasted out or that you've made at home, do you have any favorites? Well, I'm searching for a cucumber martini, so if any of you have a recipe for that, I would love to have it. Okay. But other than that, I'm a dirty martini girl. All right. Mm. Go, Diane. Yeah. (laughs) Heavy on the olives. Heavy olives. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I feel like my biggest thing, especially when entertaining, has been simple syrups. Yes. And this is one thing I think people are scared of is making simple syrup. They don't know what it is or they don't think how easy it is. I'm like, it's just sugar simple. and water. Exactly. It's simple. Mm-hmm. And so I did recently. Um, no, go ahead. And then, no, I was just thinking, and then you jazz it up from there. Like, exactly. Almost any direction you want to go. Any direction. Well, I made this one super crowd pleaser. This um, cinnamon apple. Of course, this is more fall vibes, but... You literally just boil cinnamon sticks with sugar and water, boom, cinnamon, simple syrup, and then you have, um, I think I did that with whiskey, and then splash of apple, sparkling apple cider. Yeah. And mm, literally garnish it. It's so good, and it's it's not too heavy. You know, a lot of whiskey cocktails are like heavy. Yes. That it's actually pretty refreshing because of the sparkling apple cider, and garnish it with a cinnamon stick, and people think you're like... You know, Betty Crocker. They're like, oh, this is amazing. No. I'm like, it's so easy, though. You're a mixologist. I'm a mixologist. <laughs> mm, <that laughs> and then, um, delicious. So good. You can make, um, I did this one too recently. I did blackberries. So I made this blackberry simple syrup. You literally just boil water, sugar, equal parts with a thing of blackberries and um, for like 15 minutes. And I did that with gin. And again, it was like crowd mm. pleaser. So you are straining, though. Straining. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. After you do your... Um, blackberries mm-hmm. in, in the simple syrup. Yeah, you, you boil get it, it to boiling, and then you strain let it. Let it cool. Yeah, and then strain. Is that what you do, or do you That'd immediately probably be strain? A good idea. Uh, cooling would probably be <laughs> a good idea. I don't know. I don't okay. think I did. Okay, <laughs> but now that I think about it, you should probably let it cool, and then yeah, and nobody strain. noticed. <laughs> nobody noticed. Okay, I'm depending on you for that cucumber martini. Okay, <laughs> that's a challenge to me. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to figure that out for you. Do, please. Okay. What I'll, made you come up with wanting that? I had it uh, at Grayton Beach at the Red Bar, okay. and it it was wonderful. <laughs> I don't know if it was because it had been a day on the beach or Could be. or what, and it probably was. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> others at the table having them also agreed that it was super delicious. So. Well, it, I would think in the heat, yeah. just cucumber just is so Anything. right, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to figure that out for you. <laughs> but heat or snow, I would have one. Mm-hmm. All year round. <laughs> Um, you mentioned Red Bar. That is down on your yes. BA that you love so oh, much. Yes. Talk to us about what particular beaches do you like going to down there? Well, definitely the 30A corridor, which incorporates Seaside, Seagrove Beach, Grayton Beach, and um, that's pretty much it for us. 
Do you have the same place you like to stay every yeah. time? You do? Yeah, we do. I we love, love One Seagrove Place. Wow. We've stayed at that high rise forever. And we've also stayed in homes in Seaside. Um, but you're not on the water okay. usually. Okay. And we feel like if you're if you're planning a trip and you're going to invest money into it, you want to be able to see the ocean. Yeah. So yeah. that's important. And right now, that's really the only place that's affordable. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've stayed in expensive homes, but we always come back to one Seagrove place. Yeah. So and they have the pool right. and the tennis courts and... And the free beach set up. So mm. I'm hoping if they're listening, they'll just give me a call. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it is so nice cool. down it there. Is. And it's, it's beautiful. so close to Nashville mm-hmm. where you can like drive it. I mean, you could fly, but it's mm-hmm. not that long of a drive. No. It's so underrated. I mean, it's right. the most beautiful beach place to vacation. It, it really yeah. is. Well, we, yeah. yeah, I've read because of the white sand. Um, it's the prettiest and the most cl- uh, the closest look to the Medi- to the uh, Caribbean mm-hmm. beaches. So I would I'll say it's that. nicer. Yeah, I would agree with, it. with the. I just went to the Bahamas beach. last year, mm-hmm. and I would I'd pick seaside yeah. any day. Are there expressions, whether or not you use it, that you really like? Southern expressions that you particularly love. My my dad used to really get on to us because as being one of three girls. We used to fight pretty good, and he would say, I'm going to jerk a knot in your tail, uh-huh. and I used that the other day with my That's grandchildren, so and they looked at me like, what? A knot? We have a knot? So, of course, they <laughs> took off with it, you know, and I'm like, I don't know what it we means. We have some good discipline ones, yeah. I feel like. Like, I think about that one, I think it's so funny. I'm going to give you something to cry about. Yeah. Like mom, if the kid is crying. Yeah. My over mom used silly. to say, she used to say, I brought you into this world and I can take oh, you out of it. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, that. She's gonna hate that I yes. said this one <laughs> on here, but she would always say that. And our mom said one probably to me more than she had to say it to you. Uh, I was born in the dark, but it wasn't last night. Right. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not stupid. Uh-huh. Oh wow. Uh, Trying to funny. pull one over and she yeah. like that. Okay. Two more questions. All right. And then we'll wrap it up. I'll let you go next, Lainey. Um, favorite thing about life in the South? What would you say? I One thing I'm learning about the South and I'm learning to love about the South is just how much slower paced it is mm-hmm. compared to a lot of cities I've visited. Um, I've traveled a lot just because of my job in the music industry and um, been out West, been up North, and just... When I come back home, I think the one thing I love is how slow paced it feels here. Mm-hmm. Just the um, the community that I feel like you get in the South, where people are just it's slower paced, so you take the time to you know go to your neighbor's house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And just um, take the time to sit with friends outside around a bonfire or something. Where I feel like other parts of the country. I don't know if they have that. Like, I've had friends move here, especially from um, L.A. and New York, from music industry. They'll come here and say, I just love the people. I love how I feel like I'm finding community. And I think that's because we take the time to slow down. And we, um, uh, I was reading a book recently, and I loved this, so I have to share. It said, hurry and love are incompatible. And I was just thinking about... How when you live a hurried life, it's hard to love well. And I think you get that southern hospitality. You feel the love in the south because we're not so hurried. We're not. That is so good. That is awesome. Fast paced. So I I loved that. that. Hurry and love are incompatible. Wow. Wow. I love that we connect. I mean, we greet one another. We smile at strangers. Yeah. You know, we engage in conversation. And we take the time to do that. Um, mm-hmm. During the holidays, I was shopping with my daughter, one of my daughters in downtown Franklin. And I thought that day, I, I'm really, just, I'm, I want to make eye contact with people that I pass and smile and see if they smile back. Yeah. And most of them did. And a couple of them seemed surprised, like I was going to speak to them, which, you know, I hadn't planned on it, but, you know, <laughs> hey. You know, because I think we do 
feel f- more freedom mm-hmm. to speak to a stranger yeah or mm-hmm. you know include them in a conversation and yeah that was sure. that was fun well our best husband had to get used to when he moved here from Indiana um, the grocery store <laughs> checkout, yeah. how the person would talk to him uh-huh. and ask him questions about what he was buying or right. what he was doing. And he was like, what's going on? <laughs> well, why do you need to know? Exactly. Yeah. Just small talk. Yeah, my husband is a is a Nashvillian. He was, he was born and raised in downtown Nashville and grew up off West End. But um, he likes to ask people where they're from. Mm-hmm. So he'll always find a connection. You know, yeah. oh, well, yeah, okay, I know your aunt. I went to school with her. <laughs> Is her name blah, blah, blah? Oh, you know, the girls and I joke that when we eat out in downtown Nashville or anywhere, you know, Benny's going to find someone <laughs> he knows. That's great. That's awesome. So we'll just stand there and let him go. But, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, you know, it's kind of fun, though, to watch people. Yeah. You know, first they're like, mm-hmm, yeah. and then they... Warm up because it it's so foreign. Yeah. Yeah. That is right. a, it is. a hurdle they have to get over mm-hmm. for a second, and then I think naturally yeah. we do, you know, retreat back to okay, this is an okay thing, but right. if it's so foreign, right? Not be suspicious first. of why is he? Why mm-hmm. are they talking to me? You know? mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's a southern thing. My grandpa used to talk to anyone mm-hmm. and everyone. Well, he and my when, husband would have gotten along. Oh, fabulous. for sure. <laughs> And my mom, and then I'm the same. I think it was like passed down. I can just make friends with anybody mm-hmm. and anyone. Like mm-hmm. I, and I, I think that's southern. I don't know, or maybe it's a personality thing. But I've always been made fun of that I can talk to a wall. You know, <laughs> like just make friends with anyone. I was in New York City um, back in November, December. And there was this lady I tried talking to, like, on the subway. It was also the subway because I wanted to know why there was this long line outside. I found out it was they were taping Saturday Night Live, and I thought that was so cool. And um, Or maybe it was The Tonight Show. I don't one of those. And I asked this lady, and I was like, hey, do you know what that long line was? And she literally looked at me like I was crazy for talking to her. And she was like, I don't know. And then wow. kept walking, you know. And, you know, and that's like, you can't just talk to people here. <laughs> The subway, especially, yeah, is like I a like, no talk. I was just though. asking. She seemed well, like a nice yeah. lady. You I would know? have done that too. <laughs> I would have too. Yeah, it was just—it's different it's here. A pretty simple question too. Yeah, like you what's know. that line for? Not your opinion on anything. <laughs> no right. political slant. No. no. Yeah. Just no. what's that line for? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we want to close with anything you might want to say about what you'd want someone to know about the South. So what would you hope to have someone know about the South? I want people to know that not all Southerners wear cowboy boots and have a Southern draw. <laughs> Very good. true. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you how many people have said, so where are you from? And I'll tell them Nashville. They're like, what? You're from here? I would have never guessed. They, you know, they say, I thought you were from New York or whatever, Chicago or yeah. whatever. And they're like, you don't have a southern accent, or, you know, you just don't dress like a southerner. And I'm like, well, what do southerners dress like, right. <laughs> you know? So, I guess I want people to know that not all southerners, I guess, are assuming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. I agree. We're not all hillbillies, yeah. redneck hillbillies, mm-hmm. you know, that go to a square dance on every Saturday night. But, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. we're, we're just, we're friendly, you know. But we also expect the same from whomever we're with or meet. You know, we're friendly and engaging and happy people for the most part. But we also, you know, we kind of want everybody to be like that. Don't yeah. you agree? Yeah. You know, we just, um, yeah, we're not we're not redneck hillbillies. We're just people. That's good. Mm-hmm. I was actually thinking in answer to that question, a similar thing, Diane, I was thinking we're not all uneducated. Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. a lot of people Mm -hmm. think of, oh, they're just, um, they're not as smart. That's why they Mm -hmm. do things that way. And um, that's not necessarily the case. I think there is a lot of educated Southern people who just have strong convictions about certain things. And it's not that we just don't know. It's that we feel strongly about certain things. And that's 
Mm-hmm. It's not that we're uneducated. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And we might know a lot, but we might not want to let you know that we know a lot. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, there's a bridling of our tongue as well. Yes. We might talk a lot and like to talk to people, but mm-hmm. we also uh, hopefully know when to shut our mouth, too. Totally. If our mama taught us right. That's, that's right. right. Mm-hmm. Manners. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, we can't thank you guys enough oh, for being with so us. Sweet. Thanks it's for having us. So much fun. We have to do this every once in a while. Wow. A little roundtable discussion. Well, and we hope you guys enjoyed it as well. We're going to dig into some fudge pie, finish our coffee, and we will see you guys back here next week.